Welcome everyone to Albuquerque, New Mexico, the eighth edition of the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. I'm Mark Jones alongside Brock Eward. Jessica Mendoza down in the field, a couple of teams on the field, back in the bowl picture for the first time in a while. Colorado State for the first time in five years. The Cougars of Washington State the first time in a decade. And Washington State with the early lead at seven to nothing. Time the Rams out. gonna take a quick timeout. Time and their second year head coach, Jim McElwain, this trying to get his team timeout. together. Looking at a third down and two. Here's how we got to this point. On the Cougars' first series, they were intercepted as Halliday's pass tipped up. And then on the next series, Nolan Washington took it right back for Washington State. And then it was Halliday with a touchdown pass into the end zone to Craycraft. And that's how we got to seven to nothing. A little jump top by Connor Halliday for the Colorado State sidelines. Hey, uh, a great bowl season just getting underway here. 35 games in all, 35, 33 on the ESPN Family Networks. Brock, uh, how do you see this matchup today? And when you look at not only the wind here yeah. today, uh, a passing team in Washington State that likes to sling it a lot. Colorado State a little bit more balanced. You've already seen it. Washington State's going to throw it early. They're going to throw it often. And Colorado State has got to seek some balance to keep Washington State and their playmakers on the sidelines. Third down and two here for the Rams. Grayson takes off, gets the first down, and then some. All the way out to the 39-yard line, but there's a flag back at the 22, so hold on. And it's going to come back. So that wipes out the gain by Grayson. Holding offense, number 70. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Down. Mark, this is going to be one of the challenges for Colorado State really on both sides of the ball is just the overall level of athleticism of a Pac-12 school like Washington State that's got more speed, more dynamic playmakers really at every level. On the line of scrimmage, we've already seen it in the secondary at the second level. And unfortunately for Weston Richburg, the Rams' best lineman, all-conference lineman, all he could do there is reach and hold after he's beat at the point of attack. Makes it a third and long now. 12 to go. More heat up front. And that might be grounding. Not sure he was outside that tackle box. Cooper and Viao applying the heat. And a flag down on the play. So they've been able to get to him a couple times here early. And this is a Colorado State line with four redshirt seniors right now that are just not matching up to that overall size and strength of Wazoo. Those aren't blitzes. That's not real exotic looks. They're just getting beat up front. No grounding. The penalty is lost of down. He's part of the foul. Fourth down. Fourth down coming up. The Rams will have to punt. You see Jim McElwain there. He's trying to point out that Alexander Seven was there and he was the outlet he is the running back but that's nowhere close so usually give you a little leeway on plays like that if you can get it somewhere near his feet but that was nowhere near the running back and unfortunately for Jim McElwain a penalty that's going to back his crew up give Washington State tremendous field position and surprisingly so now two possessions for the Rams not one touch for their best player All-American mm. Capri Bibbs silent thus far from nine yards deep Aiden Hunt Averaging about 42 yards per punt on the season. What about a mile high altitude? They blocked it. They came after it out of bounds. And the Cougars knifed through that front. Theron West got there to block it. Theron West, who's back in the lineup this week. Perfect. That's exactly how you're taught. You see him get his arm up. He's not going to run into the punter. That's perfect technique and fundamentals. You get your hands up, trying to estimate exactly where the launch point for that punter is going to be. And once again, too much speed for Washington State. That's the second time that Hunt has, pardon me, he's blocked one this year. Into the end zone. And incomplete. Halliday couldn't find his receiver. Dom Williams, number 80, the closest one there, but there's a flag back at the 22-yard line. 
As Halliday. Wow. Defense, number 97. The penalty is half the distance to the goal and includes an automatic. That's against Tonga. Calvin Tonga will come out of the ball game. Colorado State a little rattled here, Brock, in the early going. From the two now, they'll be first and goal. Wide splits with those linemen. Holiday into the end zone and incomplete. Intended for Christoph Williams. It'll be second down and goal. You know, Brock, they passed the ball so much. Uh, what about running the ball? They only run it 25% of the time. Nope. And another flag down on the field. Holding against an eligible receiver, number 26 in the defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal and includes an automatic first down. Wow. I'm just reaching. I mean, they're just a step snap, behind snap. right now. And if you're Washington State, you love the energy that you have come out with, and you love that you are dictating to Colorado State here really in every phase of the game right now. LaFossa, the lone back beside Halliday. Four receivers out on this formation. He's got one-on-one -on -one all across the field, the matchup he wants to attack. Looks to the wide side, touchdown! Gabe Marks. And in a blink, the Cougars lead 13-0. We saw Marks, well, before some of you joined us, he was shaken up, had to limp off the field. But obviously, healthy enough to get back and score. And you see Halliday there, gets the call he wants, press man coverage across the board. He checks to the slant route, tremendous execution. And couldn't have a better start for the Cougs. Yeah, Washington State able to capitalize on the block punt. Here's what set it up. The block punt by West, his second ever. And then Marks making it look easy. The Rams a little rattled when we come back. You're watching Capital One Bowl Week. And welcome back to ESPN's college football presentation. It's 2013 Gildan New Mexico Bowl. In the rugged peaks of the Sandia Mountains. A beautiful day here of all, from all of us at ESPN. To all of you, season's greetings. 14-0. The Cougars jumping out to a quick lead. Taking advantage of a block punt a moment ago and an interception prior to that. And one of the questions that begs, Brock, why hasn't he, Capri Bibbs, touched the ball? Well, you can get a little cute when you have a few weeks to prepare. And if you're Colorado State, you know that Washington State's going to employ a scheme and some techniques to try to take him away. And they've gone to the passing game, but not effective here early. I would completely guess that we will see Bibbs in a few runs here in this possession. Alexander on the return, stopped up at the 10 yard line and let's listen in to our Bo soundtracks and coach. Through a lot of hard work by a lot of people and not to discount the hard work that you guys put in this season, okay? We're gonna go play a Pac-12 opponent, all right? In the New Mexico. Well, that was our Bose soundtracks, the Colorado State's reaction to their selection for the 2013 Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Back on December the 8th, you can feel the level of excitement and see it and hear it there. And that was the first time Brock that Bibbs got a touch today. Bibbs ran for over 1,500 yards this year. Remember Colorado State making its first bowl appearance in five years. The Cougars, first time in 10 years. Mike Leach's team improving from just three wins a season ago. Pretty remarkable with 35 bowl games. There's not one kid on this field that's participated in one yet until today. Wow. Second down and nine. Gibbs again. Check that. That's Alexander getting the touch. They'll rotate. 
Alexander coming back from a knee injury. And let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Bell. Both All-Americans, Walter Camp, second team All-Americans. Buchanan was actually a first team All-American by the Associated Press. And Bibbs has fought a little turf toe. I also wonder if that's played a role as to how quiet he has been here. I would expect Buchanan, you will hear this afternoon. I don't know if there is a player that uncoils and hits harder in college football than Dayon Buchanan. On third and five. And off again, that's Alexander. And Alexander picks up the first down as we go downstairs to Jessica. Well, guys, Dayon Buchanan, normally a very quiet guy, but Coach had him speak to the team last night, and he said, hey, this is two years a culmination of us, of a brotherhood, where we need to make sure that we epitomize this game by how hard we've worked, the chemistry that we have had. He doesn't say much, but he made a point to say that this game was going to mean a lot to them. All right. Uh, that's a good point, Jessica. He doesn't really say much, lets his play do the talking, but yesterday found the right words for his teammates. Grayson on the move, made a great move there. And tiptoes out of bounds, just shy of the 30, picking up five after a lot of improvising and a missed tackle by Daryl Monroe. Eric Grayson out of Vancouver, Washington, the 6'2 junior. Actually recruited to Wazoo to be a defensive back. His uncle Dan was an all-conference linebacker for Washington State. And he's not your dual threat quarterback you see in college football, but he is nifty enough when he has to avoid that sack when he has to run. He is capable. There's Alexander. And Alexander picks up about two on the play, brought down by Cohen. I was curious coming into this game how much we would see of Bibbs. Had some conversations yesterday with Colorado State that he's not quite 100%. The last time, in fact, he was in this stadium, six touchdowns, 290 yards rushing. An All-American, a first-team All-Conference performer, 28 touchdowns with just six starts this season. And this is a big loss for the Rams to not have his explosion on the field. Third down and two for the Rams. Plenty of time this time. Grayson finds Alexander, and he stumbles just a little bit short, it looks like, of the first down. Fourth down coming up, Brock, with that much to go, seemingly. Do you take a shot? Is it too early? Or do you send the punt team out? You said earlier it feels like we're in the second half with all the <laughs> fireworks. Look at the clock. Wow. We're not even to the yeah. halfway point of the first quarter yet. And Coach McElwain looking down the sidelines. and This may be a timeout here. This may be talk as a staff. Let's figure out some of these matchups we're seeing right now. And then ultimately, there you go. You're not even you're not even to the midway point here of the first quarter. I, you, you, you can't afford, I think, to give up this kind of field position. Oh, look at this. Quick snap over the right side, and they've got the first down. Nice run. They bring in, that was uh, Schlager. <laughs> you know what, that's on me. I got to watch walkthrough yesterday, and they do so many situational drills to Jim McElwain all the years under Nick Saban there at Alabama, and they had and you may see this today between two point conversions, fake field goals, onside kicks. He had so much in his repertoire. They were working on situationally. That's the right call at the right time. And now Bibbs comes back into the ball game. Just under seven and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Three Bibbs who ranks second in the nation in touchdowns. Got him. They're going to take a shot up top, wide open, a busted coverage. And you're talking about six, Ram style. Love it, and you gotta love it. 63 yards for the score. Even though you've not seen many carries for Bibbs, in fact, just one here in the first quarter, it's his effect on the field, and you love the play action, and you're absolutely right, Mark. This is a complete bust. The backside coverage there for Washington State gets lost with their eyes. They're looking in. They have heard so much about bibs and bibs and bibs. They play action pass, undisciplined on the back end, and a touchdown the Colorado State so desperately needed. That's a second touchdown catch of the season for Lovett. The extra point good. And for Grayson, that's his 22nd touchdown of the year. And the Rams fighting their way back into this ballgame. I'm Garrett Grayson. That's a nice hookup. Back after this.
The 2013 Gildan New Mexico Bowl is brought to you by Gildan. We make your new favorite activewear, underwear, and socks. Gildan, every thread counts. Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. And the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. I tell you what, folks, I might have the bravest partner in all of America, taking that balloon ride yesterday. Look at, look at Brock, how, did, how high up are you there? You know, we took the oxygen mask off. We were about 18,000 feet. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. You, you, don't, you don't get up real high in those balloons. Yeah, I got a little cocky there. I was doing, I was, I was doing a little Connor Holiday right there. I was doing a little, I was doing a little talking. <laughs> Albuquerque, New Mexico, the balloon capital of the world. And uh, what was the best part of that flight, that trip yesterday? Well, the whole time wondering where you were, to be, <laughs> quite, to be quite honest. I'm grounded. I get motion sick. Now, this is a beautiful city, and we're going to chat with Coach Davey here a little bit later, the head coach now in New Mexico. And, and I'm not spending a ton of time in Albuquerque, but you could just tell with the players as well. The Washington State players, the Colorado State players, they're enjoying this experience. And... The folks with the Gildan New Mexico Bowl take really good care of both of these teams. It's well attended. Both programs sold out their ticket allotment. And we're going to have a good one. I think we're going to see a lot of points today. There's Holiday swings it complete. The real receiver screen. Williams still on the move. Williams. Touchdown Cougars. What an answer. 75 yards. But there's a flag down on the play. And you could tell by the muted reaction from Connor Halliday, this might come back. That's against Washington State, all for nothing. They'll take those points off the board. Yeah. So the penalty against Washington State. And they'll place the football at about the 42. You look at the numbers for Coach Leach, and you don't see very many rushing attempts. You're dead last in college football in yards gained on the ground. But I'll say it again, this is their run game. And you love the effort down the field. Yeah, and you do it. You see Maley just reach out, number one there. Reach out with his arm to the very left of the screen. Grab the jersey. Good call. On first down, great throw and an even better catch at the 46-yard line by Ricky Galvin. Maybe the fastest of the Cougar wide rallies. You said balance earlier, and, and that's probably a word that not many would use for this offense. That's good at the NFL level as Galvin tiptoes in. But the balance is 10 different guys with 25 receptions, mm -hmm. spreading the ball sideline to sideline, vertically as well. They get everyone involved as much as anybody in college football. 12 yard gain. Holiday wisely throws that one away. And Brock, you talk about the balance. A lot of decision making put on the quarterback in this system. In fact, Halliday was talking about he was surprised how little input Coach Leach has, right? Well, it's a lot of check with me. It's a, it's, it's a lot of trust that Mike Leach has always had in his signal callers, no matter where he has been and, and who's been under center. It's not exotic in a lot of their formations. You know they're going to throw it, but yes, he trusts Connor to get him into the right play. And it's an awfully friendly position to play in this system. On second and ten, gets rid of it quickly, complete. Out to the edge, and a first down catch and run by Isaiah Myers this time. A pickup of 15 on that play. Here's the real bind that Colorado State is in today. You're not capable of playing the man coverage and taking away a lot of those little completions. You're just not capable, and you've seen it because of the speed, and Mike Leach knows it. Just a little over halfway through this first quarter, he can see that at the field level, athletically, this is a mismatch. So what can Colorado State do? What kind of man, what kind of zone, what kind of pressure can you bring when you're outmatched physically? Holiday over the middle. Pass incomplete at the 25-yard line. Max Morgan breaking that one up, intended for Marcus Mason on this play. And jarred loose right there. And what this system also does is Shaquille Barrett the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. 
third in college football with 12 sacks. It also negates so much of his talent, his ability to rush the passer with as quickly as Connor wants to get the ball out of his hands. And here's a little gamesmanship. Here's a check and a check by the defense as well of Colorado State. Holiday with tons of time. Now into the end zone. Wrestling match and incomplete. No flag. And broken up by Jason Oden. And third and ten coming up as a result. Little hand fight between Williams and him. But nothing there from the secondary player that impedes the receiver's opportunity to go make that catch. Talking about four down territory here or with Mike Leach? What do you think? What do you think? I say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> third and ten. Let's see how big a chunk he wants to take here on third down. They heat him up and get to the quarterback Halliday for the sack. Kowulak making the sack for the Rams. And unfortunately for Washington State, as far as that decision making goes, that's the one thing you couldn't afford to do as we see a, a late flag come in. Uh, that takes him out of field goal range. Penalty is 15 yards, first down. And that's going to be an unsportsmanlike call, and you can see it right there. That is immense frustration from Jim McElwain. Who knows as the face mask gets stuck in the jersey. Yeah, and that's a reflection of Connor doing a little talking, I'm sure, but it's always the second guy, right? <laughs> the quarterback can do a little John early yeah. to the bench, and that's that's just a critical error, unfortunately, for Colorado State. More than likely, you get them off the field in a matchup that is not favorable to you defensively, and Coach McElwain knows that he cannot afford those kind of mistakes today. First down and 10 as a result of the 28. I know you don't like that call, Jones. Uh, I'd say let him talk. If, if you're playing sports, you can't be afraid of your feelings being hurt. All day for Halliday. Touchdown! West with a catch. And the points continue to pile up for the Cougars. Pick your poison when you're playing Connor Halliday in Washington State. And the Rams of Colorado State felt like they needed Connor Halliday to be put in those situations. That if he was able to get into rhythm and get the ball out of his hands, it was going to be a difficult day. They wanted to see him extend the play. They felt like that's where the sacks and the turnovers have come, but not so fast here in the first quarter. Three touchdown passes already for Halliday. And it's 21 to 7. Colorado State may have given up a touchdown on that last throw, but. They put a lick on Halliday. Sometimes it might be worth it if you call Colorado State. And welcome back, everyone, to the 2013 Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Points abound, 28 of them so far, 21-7 lead for the Cougars, the last seven coming on this touchdown pass a moment ago. What was the key here, bro? Well, the ultimate team game can become about matchups as well. And this is Shaquille Barrett. He is the Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year because of his ability to rush. But coming into this game, Colorado State said, nope, nope, we're going to take away those little easy outlets. We're going to peel. That's called peeling with our defensive ends. And unfortunately, you've got a pass rusher, a one-time D-tackle, D-end, trying to cover a little back out of the backfield. And that's advantage Connor. And that's why he's thrown three touchdowns in his last nine attempts here in Albuquerque. Remember, this uh, Cougar team slung it 89 times, folks, in a loss against Oregon this year. On the kickoff return, just shy of the 28-yard line as we go back to Chris Cotter in the studio. Chris? Mark, plenty of football across ESPN networks this afternoon over on the Deuce. Northwest Missouri State trying to win another D2 title with a 36-21 lead over Lenore Ryan. And then on the U, certainly Cougar fans know a little bit about this. Snow and fog in Washington, Cheney, Washington to be exact, but Towson with a 14-0 lead over Eastern Washington in the FCS semifinals. Mark, brought. 
All right, thanks a lot, Chris. First down and 10 from the 29 for Colorado State. Capri Bibbs, the lone back. They hand it off to him over the left side. He picks up about three or four on the play. Let's go downstairs to Jessica. Well, guys, I've been watching Capri Bibbs on the sideline. He's definitely still limping. You can tell that turf toe is bothering him. He keeps jumping on the bike. He gets off. He's frustrated. Although he's in the game, you guys, it's clear he is not 100%. Now, Brock, we did see how important he was even as a decoy on that touchdown pass, though, right? Yes, but you, boy, you desperately are searching for those yards to keep this Washington State defense honest, having to play both run and pass. On second and five. And it's Bibbs again. After the gain of six, got about two that time. Short of the first down by about a yard and well, spotted about 38. Another good Mountain West Conference, Pac-12 Conference matchup. Fresno State USC for just the third time in those two programs' history. The previous two have been pretty good games. We expect the one in Vegas today to be equally well played. Third and one. Play action. Wide open. Caught. Cartwright all the way down near the 10 yard line. Ron Cartwright, another one of those prolific receivers, picks up 51. And you love the play call of Dave Baldwin, offensive coordinator for Jim McElwain. Much like the touchdown earlier, it's that long extended play action pass and you are trying to affect all those secondary defenders and linebackers and get their eyes in the backfield. And that's happened on both the touchdown that time with the H-back Cartwright beating the coverage and Grayson executing. Yeah, it stopped up short. Sure. Looked like he actually had a chance to couldn't even get couldn't get downhill that time. Lost three yards. Monroe with the hit. And Bibbs is going to come back out of the ball game. Alexander in for Bibbs. On second and thirteen. Complete to love it. Who scored the touchdown on their last series? Picked up four. Third and about nine coming up. Interesting play call here, partner. But the nice thing is you've got a couple tight ends that are mismatches for you. Cartwright, you saw with a big chunk play in the passing game. He's third in college football from the tight end position with six touchdowns. And then Gilmore, first team all conference player, it's six six. He provides some opportunities against these defensive backs as well. I haven't heard much from Gilmore yet. Into the end zone. So his receiver fell. That was Gilmore. And it's incomplete. A little bit of contact. Yeah, you saw Gilmore there, unfortunately, stumble there and the inability to get to the ball. I'm going to bring in Steve Shar, head of SEC officials, joining us here in the booth. Uh, Steve, explain that call to us, why there was no flag. So you saw the back judge immediately. He ruled it. It looked like there was contact, but with the signal uncatchable, the ball was well over his head, so no foul. Right. And in comes the place kicker, Jared Roberts, 17 of 20 on the season. This one from 25 yards out. And he hooks it inside that upright. And the field goal is good. Let's go back to that non-call and what Steve was talking about here. Steve, explain again for our audience what exactly happened on that play. So you can see right there the ball clearly, there's no way the receiver has an opportunity to make that catch. So there cannot be a foul for pass interference if the ball is uncatchable. Now, is that, Steve, because the tight end stumbles and falls there? Because obviously Gilmore is going down. Does that, does that back judge have to make that decision right there because he stumbles, he can't get to it, or simply because of the direction of the pass is uncatchable? Yeah, he's, he's really, we're going to, these guys are great athletes, and we're going to give them an opportunity. You know, they can leap, they can do all that. But, but clearly there you see that, uh, you know, there's no way he's going to be able to get to that ball. And that's why he immediately ruled it. So, therefore, everybody knew when he put that signal, that was what his judgment was in that case. Now you saw the official with his motioning with his hand over his head. And that's unfortunate for Jim McElwain, and I, I think that's why 
he's going to have some continued conversations with the guys in the stripes because that's the play he wanted. You got the matchup he wanted. You got six foot six Gilmore, but unfortunately Grayson's got to bring that throw down and give his receiver an opportunity to make a play, much like Halliday has done on the other side for Washington State. A 31 points scored already. We're just under three minutes to go here in the first half. Cool and breezy day here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Eighth edition of this bowl game, and traditionally we've had some outstanding, compelling finishes and beginnings in this one. Let's look at what the wind is doing close to the field. And it's blown off the tee again. We're going to have to have someone hold it. Colorado State out of the Mountain West Conference taking on the Pac 12's Washington State. The teams and coaches in their second years, respectively, with their programs. 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, but you've seen both quarterbacks do a pretty good job of cutting through the wind. And what you have really seen is Washington State's overall athleticism just too much here for Colorado State in the first period. Williams on the return, almost found an alley over the right side and tripped up just around the 25 yard line. Well, Capital One Bull Week on ESPN continuing Monday with the Beefo Brady's Bowl as Tyler Tettleton leads the Ohio Bobcats against Shane Carden and East Carolina. That's Ohio against East Carolina. And the Beefo Brady's Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week, Monday at 2 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. First and 10 now for Connor Halliday. 31 touchdown passes now on the season. There's going to be a few more today. The receiver screen complete. Number 18, Christoph Williams. You may have heard me a little bit earlier, and folks, that was not a typo. You didn't hear me incorrectly. Washington State threw the ball 89 times this year in a single game, albeit a loss, against Oregon. So we'll be out of here by 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Holiday on the run. Almost dragged down, but got rid of it just in time. And there's the conference player of the year in the Mountain West Conference, Shaquille Barrett. Brock finally making a bit of an imprint on this game. Well, it's going to be a game plan move here in adjustment. You, you do spend three weeks really digging in and looking at every one of these games, looking at strengths and weakness of your personnel, their personnel. You saw Grayson, excuse me, you saw Barrett earlier having to chase down the running back down the field. I think you're going to be at your best if he has an opportunity to do that. To hit, to harass, to get Holiday off of his spot with his natural pass rush. Third and six. Pass a little bit high and incomplete. Craycraft couldn't hang on to it. And Halliday was facing a fierce rush. Fourth down and a, a bit of a win here for the Rams defense. Well, that's one of the first times you've seen Colorado State bring pressure. And they said, enough's enough. We've tried zone. They're throwing underneath and beating us. We've tried to play man and peel our defensive ends. They're beating us. So that time, you bring more than they can block, trying to force an Aaron pass. And that's exactly what happens and force well, the first punt here for Washington State. And Michael Bolin in to punt this. A little over 39. I mean, that's Concepcion punting this time. And it takes a favorable Cougar bounce out of bounds just inside the 30 yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for Colorado State coming back the other way. 21 10 so far. Did you expect this high scoring a game, Brock? Yeah. Yeah, and I think the Colorado State <laughs> defensive coaches did as well because they said, we've just got to get an extra possession or two. They expect to score offensively. They think there's areas that they can attack a Washington State, and we've seen that in the first quarter. But you can't let Halliday get started. If you've learned one lesson about him this season, when he gets hot, he is awfully dangerous. Both quarterbacks seemingly have settled down after a couple of early interceptions by each side. First down and 10 now for Colorado State. And off to Bibbs. And Bibbs with a nice dash over the left side. And that is his most spirited and productive run so far. Picks up six. And what a great story. Went to Snow Junior College out of high school. We have a lineman shaking up. Brandon Haynes, it looks like. The starting left guard. Going to limp off to the sideline. But back to Capri Bibbs. Snow Junior College. And then uh, 
you know the coaching staff at Colorado State cited his talents and uh, brought him to a junior college in Fort Collins near campus at Colorado State front range college they didn't even have a football program there so he was able to beat out the two incumbents and get most of the carries this year after not being in football for about two years a wise decision there by Garrett Grayson brought back to Bibbs how difficult is that after not playing for that long being this productive this season well, it's a tremendous challenge and, and it's I think the other areas that he's a natural runner that's not the challenge it's pass protection it's catching the football it's it's all of the other parts that go into being a, a complete running back and, and he's still a work in progress in that way he will still continue to get better but you have seen the natural rushing skills this season not so much here early in the first quarter but he's a guy that likewise when he gets started can be tough to bring down Alexander in the ball game for Bibbs and Alexander trying to creep forward for that first down going to be a little bit short picked up three and Bibbs had a big day here against New Mexico during the regular season and had a big game against Wyoming running for 201 yards. Now you saw the fourth and one earlier what looked like a punt formation and the backup safety comes in to convert. And now a fourth and one in a very similar part of the field a more traditional set here. A little bit of a statement here your strength their strength right at you. Going foot on fourth down Bibbs gets it and then someone what a collision that's what we've been waiting for all day Buchanan they own Buchanan and Bibbs manning up Mark it was Bibbs with the first down it was downfield but it was nice to see these are the two All-Americans you're talking about Walter Camp All-Americans Bibbs just the third Colorado State Ram with that honor and you see a little bit of a rarity there you actually see Buchanan going backwards that doesn't happen very often tremendous impact from our two impact players Grayson that was wide open to Hansley and Hansley looks like he picked up another first down for the Rams so you'd give that uh, that first round on the judges scorecards to Bibbs over yeah, over yeah because Buchanan, usually huh? mouthpieces ear pads <laughs> football lots of other parts go flying when Buchanan does his damage first down and 10 10 seconds to go here in the first period in a very high scoring first 15 minutes Bibbs limping a little bit there Gunned to the out. sideline and this the 14th game of the season for them Washington State playing its 13th first 15 minutes in the books 21 10 Cougars when do we come back Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Look at the uh, Sandia Peak Tramway here in Albuquerque. Terminates at the top of the mountain with an elevation of over 10,000 feet, folks. Uh, I was there on my uh, snowboard yesterday while Brock was doing his uh, balloon thing. No, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> 31 points on the board already as we begin the second 15 minutes of play here second quarter Mark Jones Brock here Justin Mendoza down on the field little receiver screen incomplete dropped by Joe Hansley Hansley uh, played a lot as a true freshman uh, this year a sophomore uh, gives you good yards after catch but you got to catch it first and he's usually the most sure handed of the Colorado State receivers and that's unfortunate because you spent the corner talking through what play you wanted to get to you're in Washington State's end of the field and that screen would have gone a long ways if Hansley could have looked it in Alexander in the backfield gets the carry here down to the 40 yard line picked up about three third down and seven coming up keep an eye on this today Colorado State Jim McElwain told us yesterday has five different tempos with which they can play against Boise State earlier this season they ran well over a hundred plays and I have a hunch as this goes along that you're going to want to limit possessions five possessions for both teams in the first quarter I to say it's got to slow that wazoo offense down by keeping them on the sidelines Boots bringing some pressure this time and it forces Grayson to throw it away Monroe was right in his grill as we go downstairs to Jessica 
Well, Brock, you talked about the core of seniors for Colorado State's offensive line. Well, one of them, Brandon Haynes, the left guard, hurt his right ankle. They've taken him to the locker room, and his return is now questionable. Well, how does that affect the game plan, if at all? And in steps in Mason Myers there, the red shirt junior. Remarkably, Colorado State played all five linemen every single start this season, and, and it was a huge reason why they were so successful on the ground. A continuity, the fact they've been in this program. They're really, in many ways, the identity of this team. They're going to fake it. Fake. They go for it again. And close to the first down, looks like they got it. Max Morgan, the middle linebacker, took the direct snap. So Coach McElwain full of surprises and smoke bombs and mirrors today. That one worked. Yeah, they executed this earlier this season as well. That's the second time that Morgan has moved the sticks. You can see the former high school running back and linebacker. You've, you've got to do this. You know if you're Jim McElwain, you cannot play just traditional football against Washington State today because of many of these matchups. Tremendous call. Still on the move. And throws it out of bounds to live another day. The, uh, Coach McElwain from the Nick Saban coaching tree. Uh, that that branch is a little bit different. I think the branch uh, is a little uh, off on a tangent, a little more uh, risky than Coach Saban might uh, otherwise run. Well, I don't know if you've noticed this, but a little different personnel between the two programs, yeah, too. Yeah, just... And at Alabama, you could line up and just run it right at people. This first thing he said to us yesterday, a little smoke and mirrors to get the job done this season. Alexander on the carry, spins out of one tackler. And brought down, the ball came loose. They own Buchanan made the hit. And they're going to say that he was down. Pick up of three on the play by Alexander. And guess who? Yep, they own Buchanan. If you are a running back and wide receiver, you've watched enough tape to know that around the pile, look at the little explosion. Doesn't look like much. But anytime you see that headgear jostle because of the impact, even in a very small, confined space, you know Buchanan's around. Bibbs back in the ball game, gets it into the boundary. Bibbs with a nice move and picks up the first down at the 19-yard line. Capri Bibbs, perhaps playing on a bad wheel, picks up nine for the first down. I don't think there's any doubt about the, the perhaps. He is, and he, he fought turf toe, and it was actually Utah State earlier this season that he got it initially, and he's fought through in the bowl practices. They know he's not 100%. He knows he's not 100%, but he's giving you everything he has. And that was all bids on that first down run. 13th play of the Colorado State Drive coming up. Incomplete. Behind Hansley. Tough pass and a near miss for the Rams. Tough pass, but the right throw. He's throwing it away from the safety there. You see Casey Locker, 22. Is that on the receiver or on the quarterback? Ideally, you don't want to make him spin all the way around. Okay. You may want to just put it a little bit on the back shoulder, but that's a play that you have to make. And for Hansley, and Grayson knows this, he trusts him immensely. Second leader receiver, that's a play that over and over and over again, Hansley has made for Grayson. It's second down and 10, a long drive by Colorado State, their longest of the day. Remember we had that Central Florida game earlier this year, and I told you that a quarterback can throw, and by your precision can throw into a safety, away from a safety. That time he's trying to take him away from impact. Unfortunately, the two can't connect. It's Bibbs. In between the tackles down near the 15 yard line. Got four on the play. Third down coming up for Colorado State. You see number 10 right there, Gilmore, the tight end. They tried to go to him earlier, third down in the red zone. He stumbled, the ball ruled uncatchable. Those are a couple of the difference makers that Colorado State does have. Gilmore's a guy that's going to get a look at the next level just because of some of his size, and they'll move him around. He's right here in the slot. Cartwright, another tall receiver. Plenty of time to throw for Grayson, and the pass complete. 
That's Lovett who got a touchdown in the first quarter. Picks up the first down. And it's going to be first and goal. Watch Grayson go through his progression read here. He actually is looking for Gilmore first. He doesn't like him, but because his eyes are there, you can see him manipulate the linebackers from right back underneath. And unlike Hansley, well, Lovett pulls it in and moves the sticks. This is exactly what the Rams want to do. Keep that Washington State offense off the field. Keep them as spectators. First and goal when we come back. The 2013 Gildan New Mexico Bowl is brought to you by Albuquerque, It's a Trip, Vonage, and Hyundai. Make the holidays shine even brighter. Now during Hyundai Holidays. Well, yesterday, both teams taking part in the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Pep Rally to Old Town Plaza here in Albuquerque featuring marching bands, mascots, and cheerleaders. And uh, when you step to another guy's drums like that, I think that's a challenge move. I, I thought that I saw was a drum line. Yeah, I thought that was a no no. Yeah. I'm trying to fight. <laughs> First and goal. The pre bibs in the backfield. Longest drive of the ball game for the Rams. Bibbs on the move and stopped cold at about the three yard line. Got a little over a yard on the play. Second and goal coming up. Seventeenth play coming up. Longest one of the year for Colorado State. Doesn't mean a thing without points. A little movement up front. And Richburg got drilled by Cooper. Dead ball foul. Offside by contact. Number 96. Half the distance of the goal. It remains second down. Smart. And Richburg actually a high school quarterback back in the day. And he takes one for the team. But when you've got four redshirt senior linemen and a guy like Richburg in the middle making his 50th start, there's some conversation between center and quarterback of, hey, these guys are getting a jump. These guys are really itchy. Here's your chance to, to, to hard count them and get you a little freebie. Hibbs couldn't break the tackle, brought down short of the end zone again. Pole making the stop, and what an interesting week it's been for Tony Pole. Had to clear up an academic issue earlier this week. Flew back to Pullman to take care of it after reports surfaced that he was going to be ineligible academically to play, and then got it cleared up and flew back here to Albuquerque, hence in the lineup. And a big part of what they do up front. Four down territory. That'll be third and goal. Longest drive of the season for Colorado State into the end zone, into coverage, and incomplete. Hansley, the intended receiver, fourth down coming up. And McElwain with a decision here. And down in the red zone, your reads and progressions, well, they hit a lot faster. And yes, while the play is designed to throw it to the back end zone, look at that. You see two Cougars converge on Hansley. That underneath route, that slants a touchdown, but that clock, everything goes faster when you're down there in the red zone. And instead of four down territory, mm -hmm. you're going to take the points and try to make this a one possession game. Roberts in to kick the field goal. But hold your hat, yeah. he's already had two fake punts. <laughs> Don't sleep on Coach McElwain today. Roberts knocks it through. And it's 21 to 13 after the 19 yard field goal with just under 10 minutes to go. Rams burn some clock and put some points on the board. Chris Cotter in studio. Derek Carr leads FBS in passing his Bulldogs and the USC Trojans about ready to get going at the Las Vegas Bowl. Over on ABC, they'll kick in about 15 minutes. Back to Mark and Brock. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Back here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Colorado State with a field goal is now 21 to 13. It's Brock, Mark, and 
joined now by the head football coach of New Mexico, Bob Davey, former partner for five years. Thanks for joining us, partner. Well, good to be with you. Yeah. I know it's extremely cold for you today. <laughs> Coming out of South Florida, no so you've got your gloves on. And uh, Ready for Brock, the Brock soft. doesn't have anything, soft. anything on. Ready for the weather. Year two for Coach Bob Davey, and uh, we'll talk about uh, his prospects moving forward as, long, as well as the uh, Mountain West Conference and other issues and other notable things. The kick. And it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Bob, uh, hey, we've got a couple coaches in, in this game today. Michael Each and Coach McElwain, second year on the job, your second year on the job. How difficult is it when you come in that first year identifying things and establishing a plan and, and moving, moving forward? Yeah, you know, I think every situation is different, but so much credit to Mike and Jim uh, to come in and just put your identity on it right away. You know, you look at Colorado State, you know, a lot of the Alabama style offense, Brock, the big multiple tight end zone play action pass. And then Mike Leach, you know what his identity is. So you, you see both those guys putting their fingerprints on their jobs immediately. Who goes running on first down. Mason, one of the few runs. Remember, this is a team that only runs it 25% of the time. So what's the coach seeing through the first quarter and a half? I think holding people to field goals now is what college football has become. And, uh, you know, Washington State able to hold Colorado State to a couple field goals. Uh, a lot of offense, and that's what college football is in particular. That's what the Mountain West Conference is, Brock, offense. Second down and 10. How good is this conference? I think it's really good. Uh, I think uh, offense, 77, five-yard penalty. It remains second down. I, I think the offenses in this league, particularly because of the quarterbacks, because of the schemes, are well ahead of the defenses in this conference. I think there were eight defenses in this conference that were below 100 in the total rankings, total defense. But a lot of good quarterbacks, a lot of good coaches, and I think it's a, 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 an excellent conference. Holiday slings it incomplete at the 40-yard line. No flag on the play. Well defended by Colorado State. Bob, uh, what do you make of the conference's matchups? There are three of them, actually, between the Mountain West and, and the Pac-12 and how they match up relative to their respective states. Yeah, I'll be surprised, quite honestly, if Fresno this afternoon doesn't beat USC. In my opinion, uh -huh. Fresno State, you know, other than the hiccup they had against San Jose State in that shootout, is a de definite BCS football team. I'll be surprised if they don't beat USC. That game's on it. Starting in about seven minutes' time. Flag down, Holiday on the move, slings it complete. But this one might come back. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a hold. And you've seen Colorado State coach Davey here in these third downs get to some pressure. I think they felt like they wanted to peel off and play some zone and take away the first and second options for Holiday. He's burned them. Holding. And you've seen on the offense number 58. The penalty is 10 yards. The previous. And you've seen a bit more pressure here from the Rams in the second quarter as yeah, you see the Barrett hold. forcing the hold. They held the right guy. That, he's a <laughs> heck of a player. But what you see is how difficult it is to get pressure on the quarterback. You know, whether it's Colorado State's offense being able to run the ball, run the ball, and then play action, or Washington State with the big splits, the quick screens. You know, Brock, it, it's tough these days to pressure a quarterback unless you just have better players than the other team. Third down and 20 coming up. This time, pass complete to Christoph Williams. So Bob, you, you'd said that, you know, when you were with us in the booth for several years, you said if you ever went back to football, You'd run that quarterback duck. And I looked at the numbers, buddy, and you've been running that quarterback duck here in New Mexico. Yeah, you remember that. You know, <laughs> I mean, just in our situation, Mark, to kind of level the playing field right, right now as we rebuild this program, option football has been outstanding for us. And all my years at Notre Dame playing those service academies, I knew if I got back in it, I'd have some element of triple option. Not a great punt, but a very favorable role for Washington State all the way inside the 20-yard line. Coach, we're going to ask you to stick around for one more segment after that 54-yard punt, and we'll uh, chop it up a little bit more on the other side of this. Back in a minute. I went with. And welcome back, everyone, to beautiful Albuquerque, New Mexico. A look at the piercing shoulders of the Sandia Mountains. 21-13, Mark Jones, Brock, you are joined by 
head coach of New Mexico, the Lobos, Bob Davey, former colleague of ours here. Bob, hey, you've seen number five Capri Bibbs play quite a bit in this conference. So what do you make of his relative talent so far? First of all, I've been here two years. It's the first time I've heard piercing shoulders <laughs> of the Sandia Mountains. But no, Bibbs is a player. I mean, he's really in a lot of ways ignited this program from Jim McElwain because they love to run the football so much. First and ten, Grayson going to throw it. And he's picked off into coverage. And it's Buchanan, the playmaker. Does it with hits and does it with his hands. His sixth of the season. And the second interception thrown by Colorado State. Yeah, Buchanan is not just a guy that can unload in the run game. He does a really good job of baiting Grayson. He gets just enough depth there to make the interception. And you can see Grayson, this is a high-low read. He's got the flat route underneath, the corner behind, and that's a senior in Buchanan baiting that throw and then doing what he's done 15 times in his career. Mark picking that ball off and doing something with it. Huge play for Washington State to return the momentum that had really gone Colorado State's way. Mason in the backfield, the lone back. Let's see if they take a shot here on first down. They hand it off instead to Mason. Found the seam and makes it down to the 13-yard line. But you, know, you talked about the mentality of just trying to hold them a little bit when you play defense in this conference. Yeah, and what kills you, that's really three turnovers for Colorado State because they had the... Uh, um, Holding the block punt. offense, right. number 60. Penalty this one's going to come back. But really for Colorado State, the two turnovers, the block punt, and then they had the unnecessary unsportsmanlike conduct yeah. on fourth down. They were going to get the football back right there. So that's four turnovers. But it is all about trying to way, try to find a way to play defense, Mark. Is that college football or is that just your conference? The, the biggest difference from when you sit on the sidelines with Notre Dame to standing on the sidelines now? It's defense. It's defense. And it is college football, I think, particularly in the Mountain West Conference with these quarterbacks. The pass complete again to Williams. Williams picks up about four on the play. So what's the answer? What's the answer in the MAC? What's the answer in the Mountain West? What's the answer around college football? Will that ever turn, Bob, and you see some of that elite defense again? I don't think it's going to turn. Not, not back to the 290 yards a game total defense, giving up 12 points a game total defense. Uh, the offenses are just so sophisticated. The element of the quarterback run, look at the NFL now, just that element of the pistol zone read, just the threat of that has really changed the landscape of the NFL a little bit. A little pressure coming from Colorado State. They picked it up and it's a touchdown. Maley with the catch. Beautiful. 28 yards for the score. You heard Coach Dave alluding to quarterbacks and what they can do to defenses, and we've seen it now four times today. You give Holiday a little bit of space and room. Colorado State brings a little bit of pressure, and that's a one-on-one -on -one mismatch. Maley, 6-3, big kid, 220 pounds, getting inside an inexperienced Colorado State secondary and making them pay. And that's the seventh touchdown catch of the season for Vince Maley. Former... Juco star out of Sierra Junior College, and now it's 28 to 13, under seven minutes to go in the first half. Coach, want to thank you for joining us in the booth, uh, Mark, man. Appreciate good it. luck moving forward. Appreciate it. Brock, you guys have a great Christmas. You guys doing a great job together. Good to see you, man. Thank Hi, you. buddy. Thank you. Back with more on the other side of this. And welcome back, everyone, to the 2013 edition of the Gildan, New Mexico Bowl, 28-13. Washington State with the lead, and the records continue to tumble for Washington State. Halliday's four touchdowns ties a bowl record, and we have more than half of a football game to play still. And if you're a Washington State fan, you're excited about his redshirt senior year because you put the tape on from week one to where this team is now, where this offense is now, and his handle of where everybody is on the field. I mean, that, that's so critical for Mike Leach. His level of balance is attacking every inch of the field. And when he has a quarterback that can see it, that can check it, that can read, well, you have a chance to take advantage as he has done. Mike Leach, almost every single year, he's been a head man. It's really helped that his offensive line hasn't given up as many sacks as they did a season ago. They gave up over 50 sacks last year. Hey, folks, tomorrow morning, get your NFL Sunday started off on the right foot at 10 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. 
Sunday NFL Countdown. Chris Berman and the gang providing all the latest news updates from around the league right up to kickoff. And then before you set your lineups, catch Fantasy Football Now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2 as our experts provide all the information you need to give you an edge in your fantasy leagues, including your fantasy kickers who might make a comment after they kick a game-winning field goal. Huh? What about that last week? And you could do that when you kick six <laughs> and the last one's from 61. <laughs> First down and 10. Let's see how the Buffaloes respond after the interception that led to the touchdown. Gibbs, pardon me, Bibbs on the carry and uh, Jessica with more on Bibbs. Well, if you guys notice, Bibbs' right cleat is different from his left. That's a special cleat made for the turf toe that he has. It has a metal plate in it. And guys, normally your toes will flex in a normal shoe, but this metal plate restricts that flexion and keeps his toes stationary, which helps take up a little bit, take off a little bit of that pain. I guess they can do or have to do anything they can to get him on the field. Pass complete. Just shy of the 40 yard line to Rashad Higgins. First down and 10. It's a big drive. I mean, this is a really big drive. Your margin, if you're Colorado State, is very slim today because, as we talked about a number of times, many matchups on this field do not favor you. As Coach Davey alluded to, the interceptions, the block punts. You know, to even be within 15 right now with so many of those mistakes, you got to take advantage here before you go into half. Gibbs broke a tackle and spun forward to the 40-yard line. Picked up three on the play. Eric Grayson uh, trying to lead this team back and steal some of that momentum back. I think what you lose with that steel plate in that shoe is just an explosion that you do see on film. I mean, he hits a crease and has done it so many times this year. He's gone. That's just not going to be the case today. Grayson into the flat. Complete. In the market about the 40-yard line, about a one-yard gain to Charles Lovett. And back to quarterback Garrett Grayson. You know, one of the tipping points, maybe the turning point of the season for him was after that Tulsa game. He met with Coach McIlwain and... You know, he was just 12 of 29 with two picks in that loss. And they were 0 2 at the time. He thought he might be benched, lose his starting job. He was depressed, didn't eat for two days, he said, and met with coach. It really turned his season around. Got some confidence from that meeting and got some better preparation habits. And it led to an otherwise successful finish. Looking for success here, won't find it. Sacked back at the 33 yard line by Paolo. And fourth down coming up, and he comes up limping. That's the fifth sack on the season for Paolo. And that is just a four-man rush. You can see Grayson trying to work through his reads. But when you rush four, you collapse the pocket as he reaches for his lower leg. Now there's nowhere for him to throw, and that pass rush for Washington State not been tremendous this year. Just 19 sacks coming into this game. But they're being effective with that four-man rush. Leon Brooks back standing for the punt and ready to receive it at the 26. I think the Rams took off a little bit early there. It's against Colorado State. That's a little different Coach McIlwain than the one we met with yesterday when he was a little laid back and jovial. Yeah, penalty to the game, yeah, that'll do it to you. Sacks, interceptions, block punts. Good punts. Down to the 40-yard line. Not sure that was by design. Brooks on the return. And it's a good one into Colorado State territory. And pushed out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. Just a 33-yard punt and 19 on the return. One more look at this punt. Yeah, and that's just, that is a miss. Now, he is kicking and punting into some of that wind. You can't afford it. I mean, you just cannot afford it against an opponent that, that outmatches you in many, many ways. You just can't afford the real estate that you're giving up in the special teams games, the turnovers, and let's see if Washington State can really pounce and put some pressure on Colorado State. The touchdown drive here. That pass complete. 
to Craycraft. Remember Craycraft with another first down for Washington State. Six foot freshman, true freshman. Out of California, picks up 16. Wide open. Craycraft got his feet down. It's going to be complete at the seven yard line. First and goal, Cougars. Boy, Halliday had all day to find him and hit him. And look at the splits there. It maybe is as unique as you're going to see. And that's just a bust. And right now, Colorado State is absolutely reeling. Halliday is getting the ball out. He's efficient, he's effective. He's looking for his fifth touchdown pass here in the first half, which would be a new Gildan New Mexico Bowl record. From the seven, first and goal. Boy, they run it. West with a great move, but stopped up at about the three yard line. They're in West. Take a look at second and goal. Take a look at this. Joe Dahl, who's played left guard all season long for this game today, they flip flopped. He is outside playing tackle. You do this because look what it does to the defensive end there, Bear. Look how far away now he is from the quarterback. And look at the lanes. You naturally create lanes with splits like that. Just one of the little adjustments that Wazoo has made today. Halliday. Waiting. Touchdown! Galvin came out of the maze of players with the ball. And that's a new Gildan Bowl record with five touchdown passes. And a career high for Halliday. Yeah, he's done it twice this season, throwing five touchdown passes. Just a four-man rush. And unlike Washington State, that's affecting Grayson with a four-man rush, you're not getting to Halliday. And that shows you the confidence that which he is playing. Committing a no-no, yeah. throwing it all the way back across the field. But right now, kind of like those shooters when they get hot, that rim gets really, really big. For Halliday right now, and he is red hot. A little heat check for Halliday. And right now he's heating up. Yeah, that's my kind of night. That's my kind of night. So many things to do in and around this Albuquerque area. Besides attend a great football game, the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Look at that scenery. We're about what about 10,000 feet up at that point. Looking down on the valley to the east, to the west, so many great sights in and around Albuquerque. How many touchdowns are you going to see today? That's five already. My guess is Mike Leach is not going to come off the accelerator. I think you are going to see Connor Halliday continue to be incredibly aggressive in this second half. Kaufman watches it go over his head. Let's go back to Chris in the studio. Todd, coming up at the half, we're going to be joined by uh, Robert Smith and Todd McShay. We're going to talk about USC and Fresno State. They've kicked off over on ABC in the Las Vegas Bowl. We're also going to look at the two bowl games tonight, including Tulane. First time in a while they've been bowling. And we've crowned a Division II National Championship. We'll, champion, we'll show you highlights of that game coming up. Now back to Mark and Brock and beautiful Albuquerque. All right, thanks a lot, Chris, from the 25, first and 10. Bibbs in the game with that reinforced steel plate shoe bottom, helping his turf toe, and makes a nice run here out to the 38-yard line. Uh, Jessica Mendoza making that report a few moments ago, and you see Bibbs taking his time and getting up after each and every run, picked up 12 that time. And what you're seeing is him coming off the field an awful lot, and that's not what you have seen from Colorado State over the last six weeks of this season where he was really, really good. All the way to second team, Walter Camp All-American good. Only the third Ram in their history to accomplish that. That pass complete to the 44-yard line by Grayson, caught by Crockett Gilmore. Picks up seven on the play. 54 rushing yards, nothing you know, to cry about in the first half. On pace, obviously, to get to that century mark. And there's Buchanan, four tackles, the big interception that changed momentum, momentum so drastically. Another pass complete, meanwhile, to Crockett Gilmore picked up five. Gilmore, that uh, tall, imposing target, first team All Mountain West this year. 
And this is the stretch where Grayson has really matured. This is the time where you do not panic, where you do not force it. Some of the play calls have certainly helped here, but good patience, you can't get it all back with one throw. Swings it complete to Gilmore again. You know, Gilmore likes playing here. Got his first touchdown pass. His collegiate first touchdown pass uh, right here in this stadium. Picked up 25. And a timeout called by Colorado State. Pardon me, Washington State burning one of its timeouts. Well, a lot coming up in your stocking stuffers, including Christmas Day NBA basketball, Bulls, Nets, OKC, Knicks, Heat, Lakers, and Rockets, Spurs, Clippers, Warriors. That's the one. I'll be down in San Antonio with head coach George Carl calling that one. Brock, uh, you know, what do you make of the Dwight Howard, Tim Duncan matchup there? A couple of good, talented bigs. I know you're an NBA guy. Hey, you know, you're from it's, Seattle. It's, do, do your loyalties go to OKC still, or do they transfer? Oh, did I just start fight talk? That, is that a dirty word? You watch your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you Seattle dare. resident. You got a lot of folks in the Seattle area right now <laughs> listening to this. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're not mentioned in the same breath, my friend. OK. I know better. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10 coming up. Alexander in the backfield. Bibbs on the sideline watching. Grayson given time. Incomplete. Batted away nicely at the last moment by Nolan Washington, who already has an interception today. Made a great play there. And that's on the big tight end, Cartwright. That's one of those matchups that Colorado State likes, especially down here in this area of the field. Cartwright, Gilmore gets your big tight end. Much more of an H-back for Cartwright. Six touchdowns on the year. You see the big frame there, 6'4", 240. And speaking of basketball, you'd like him to try to leverage as best he can. Use that big frame to force that DB to come over the top of you. On second and 10. Underneath that pass complete to Higgins. That's their playmaker. Stopped up at about the four yard line. That's when a spot where he stepped out of bounds. A 21 yard gain, first and goal. Here's a little bit of the difference. Look at the protection. You see a four man rush that does not get home. Grayson has the opportunity to scan the field. As he said, come down to one of his more dynamic receivers in Higgins that does his job. And these are going to be critical points here for Colorado State. If they can close this gap, feel good about yourself going into halftime. Yet there's still 97 seconds for the Boogs. A little reverse. Bibbs hands it off. That's Hansley trying to get to the edge and can't. Drag down. No horse caller call on that play. Looked like it might have been close. Demonte Horton making the tackle on the play. And that could have drawn the flag there. Second and goal coming up. Bibbs pounding forward, stopped up a few inches shy of the end zone. Third and goal coming up. You got to think that they're going for it here on fourth down, even if it comes to it, right? Yeah, you would think so. And I'm a little surprised that Washington State's not used a timeout here to save these seconds as well. They break the huddle quickly. They overload the left side. Bibbs touchdown, no doubt, on that run. But an otherwise frustrating day for Capri Bibbs. But he finds the end zone that time and brings the Rams a little bit closer. It's one of those creative formations. And good to see Brandon Hayes there, the left guard, 75, back in the game. But Dave Baldwin, longtime offensive coordinator in college football, been many places. Jim McElwain, they know they can't just simply get in the eye formation and run it right at Washington State. They utilize the overload. The quick pitch to out leverage the defense and Bibbs gets home. Extra point good and the margin down to 15 now. Now Brock, you talk about an overload. This is the mother of overloads. Yeah, I've sent a, a bunch of clips to our crew this <laughs> week with some formations that, that I haven't seen in six years of doing this job. Now that's not that unconventional, but you get your two big tight ends over there, a couple extra receivers. 
And that's what you want for Bibbs. Just try, try to give him a lane. Yeah, look at all of this. And then the real key is look at Washington State trying to figure it all out. And while they're still talking to each other, well, you get the quick pitch and you get right out there on the edge. I, I believe the term you used in our production meeting was varsity blues-like formations, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Citing the old football movie. Regardless of formation, they put points on the board. Bibbs with his 29th rushing touchdown this season. Remember, he came in number two in the nation in FBS in rushing touchdowns. And that one number 29, so still more than a couple of touchdowns behind. Actually, just two touchdowns behind. But within striking range. From the 12, it's Williams. And Williams down just outside the 20-yard line. Hey, after that last touchdown by Bibbs, look what he does. Does this move look familiar? <laughs> you remember Joey Porter, folks, right? Well, there he is on the sidelines. Now a uh, coach with Colorado State. He made a promise to his mom that he was going to go get his degree and met with Jim McElwain. And Coach McElwain said, how many credits do you need? Yeah, I'd love to have you back. And he's been a real good influence. I think Sheffield yeah, Barrett, Barrett, yeah, I think more than anybody else has really taken to his coaching and teaching and been the beneficiary of having Joey back on campus. And pass incomplete. Porter, longtime pro with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Coach McElwain telling us that he's been a real great help to not just the defensive side of the ball, but uh, everybody. Second and ten. And a sack back at the ten yard line. They got to Connor Halliday. Barrett was one of the guys there. And he had a bunch of friends, including Eli Edwards. That pleases Coach Porter. So third down coming up. Hey, take, take a look at this. When we had that shot of, of Porter over there on the sidelines, you could see I was watching Barrett to look over to the sidelines, and Joey was giving him a little inside move. You saw him wave inside. Actually, that last rush, Barrett does exactly that. That's a guy that's rushed quarterback for many, many years in the league that tries to get a little bit of a feel for what that offensive tackle was doing it. And that time, Barrett takes the inside rush, affects Halliday, and forces a third and extra long. Porter telling us about how good, how efficient Barrett is using his hands, Brock, in rushing the quarterback. Now take a look at this. You know, he's talking to him. Shaq, that's what they call him. Yep, there you go. Go inside. Give him. I'm, I'm watching that offensive tackle. I'm keyed into what he is doing. And there you see the communication, the relationship between the two to then go out there and execute and utilize it. Let's go downstairs to Jessica for more. Well, guys, I, I caught up with Shaq yesterday about his relationship with Joey Porter. And he said, you know, along with the technique that I've been able to learn from him, he said it's really been a lot about that relatability. He's like, I'm a father. Joey was a father when he was here at Colorado State. He's like, he's given me a lot of personal advice. It's helped me so much. And at the end of the day, the confidence to execute the technique that he's also teaching me. So definitely a great relationship between these two guys. Yeah, really a, a unique situation with Barrett being the married father of uh, two kids and uh, it was interesting to hear coach McElwain talk about how uh, you know he has his teammates as as babysitters group babysitters for his his children sometime yeah, uncle Bernard I believe <laughs> Bernard Blake the red shirt junior corner is is the first call on the Rolodex of babysitter time family environment that's exactly what Jim McElwain is trying to create there in Fort Collins and an accountability and unselfishness and to have someone of Barrett's talents with Porter right on side is Bob Davies said, hard to play defense in this conference. you got to find difference makers in any way, shape, and form. And Barrett's exactly that for Jim McElwain. Third and long. Holiday incomplete. Boy, looked like West might have been expecting a hit. Stops the clock with 38 seconds to go. Well, Colorado State going to get the ball back here. Well, there's a flag down on the field. I but think, if they do get the ball back, maybe a chance to do something with it. I think this is going to be a hold on Washington State's receiver. Yeah, they'll decline it. Yeah, there's some blocking down the field there, I believe, with Maley. Trying to get the little swing pass, and he's blocking, but he's holding. And that's quite a stop here 
And as you said, with the incompletion, you know, you burned your timeouts, but it gives you a chance. Hensley's going to be standing at his own 45 yard line, right around midfield, actually, to get this punt. And remember, West Concepcion, the punter, he punted for the first time in the Apple Cup. He's punting as well today, so not a wealth of experience at that position either. See if they come after him a little bit. They did. And Concepcion, his punt is short. Hansley fields it on Washington State's side of midfield at about the 40-yard line with 30 seconds to go after the 30-yard punt. So uh, now a little bit of time to work with for Coach McElwain in Colorado State. And you've got an excellent kicker, an all-conference kicker, and Andrew Fernie. It's 15 of 19, oh, excuse me, it's, it's actually Jared Roberts, 17 of 20 on the year, long of 54. You're for, thinking points here if you're Grayson. You're absolutely no sacks, no negative plays. You're thinking points going into halftime. No timeouts remaining, though, for the Rams. Got to work quickly and efficiently. Grayson completes it. That's Alexander. You see the field goal range line there. He just got inside it, so they're inside the range of Jared Roberts, the all-conference kicker. He's two of three from 50 yards out on the season. Pardon me, career. Second and one. Pass incomplete. And a flag thrown. The defender was Satoke working against Gilmore. And, uh, and that's Sagote trying to go through. I think the bigger body tied in. Unlike the Cartwright on that incompletion in the end zone. Boy, that's huge, Brock. Yeah, you're going to see Gilmore use that big frame, 6'6", 255 pounds, and force Sagote. go through and it, it I guess it's the contact on the back there usually if you're not impeding that receivers round, you don't see the arm around that's that's a tough call I think for the Cougs right there for, nope. and for Sakote in particular no timeouts remaining for Colorado State pass incomplete maybe tried the back shoulder pass to Alexander Sakote was being worked on again incomplete stops the clock with 15 seconds to go okay now with 15 seconds, you you have to throw it beyond the sticks. The clock will stop with 15 seconds. You have an opportunity, Mark, to still throw it beyond the sticks. Clock stops. You can then still throw it away and get a chance to get the field goal kicker on, but it's got to go past the sticks here. Grayson under heat. Well, at least he didn't take the sack. He almost got sacked. Good pressure by Palacio. And it's fourth down coming up. Pardon me, third down and ten. Palacio got the arm a little bit. Eleven seconds to go. No timeouts remaining. Grayson with a ton of time, but he's got to watch the clock. Five seconds to go, he gets down. That's not going to do it. No timeouts remaining. Fourth down coming up. And they stop the clock because he got the first down. And they're going to run the place kicking unit on the field. Wow, that was a dangerous play, bro. Yeah, but this clock is... the clock. And we had one second remaining. We have lost time on our monitors. Mike Leach may be asking for an explanation, too. Here's one more look. You see the game clock at 7 6. Down there. Colorado State was, according to our records, out of timeouts. So 
So in comes Roberts to kick the field goal. Yeah, they must have burned a timeout, Mark. There's no other way to explain yeah. that. They must have had, unfortunately, a timeout left there, and fortunately for them to take. So in comes Roberts. This attempt from 30 yards away. And now the Cougars are going to try and put him on ice on this cold day. And Mike Gleach uh, still getting an explanation from the officials. Yeah, and you can see the explanation there. So they had a timeout. Colorado State had had that. Had had a had had a timeout to take there, and he was clearly down, and have called that timeout before time expired. And yeah. here's Mike Leach is obviously not going to take all of his timeouts into halftime. So that stop that uh, Colorado State's defense got on that huge, previous possession huge. could bear some fruit here in a field goal. Jared Roberts from 30 yards out. And it's a 12-point game. That's the end of the first half. An interesting first half here in Albuquerque. 35-23, the Cougs with the lead. Right now we're going to send it to Chris Carter, Todd McShay, and Robert Smith in the studio for the halftime report.